This is a 2010 Buick LaCrosse. Setting a time and chain code. So it's going to get a set of time and chains put in it. 86,000 miles on it. Customer bought set of time and chains, and idler sprockets, hydraulic tensioner, guides tensioner, tensioning arms, crank sprocket, chain. Direct injection. It has the old P0008 code for time and chain performance. Well, the first thing I want to do is to uh, start getting the air cleaner and uh, intake off of it. And uh, kind of evap line and uh, coolant line run over to the coolant tank and then here's the uh, vent line and I'll have to take the power steering reservoir bracket loose and this uh, Eventually this uh, upper radiator hose and this outlet end I think before I take that off I'll raise it up and uh, get the antifreeze out of it Getting that air cleaner out of there Really stuck in there Um, we got to take a tube loose and push back on it Take all the screws out of that and then the whole top just hinges, it don't come off of there until you straighten it clear up. I went ahead and jacked the car up, set it on a jack stand. I'm going to take uh, all this plastic off so I can get to the uh, drain on the radiator and the dampener on the engine. Seven row seven millimeters. Uh, some probably T15 torques. Another seven millimeter. And some push pins. your eyes there's stuff in the, behind this uh, splash shield uh, it's been there since it was built I think
What a mess. Into something now. This is radiator drain. And a dampener pulley. It's kind of woolly back here. Well, I got to. Drain plug loose on the radiator and the antifreeze is draining. Well, that's happening. I'm going to go ahead and take this air bleed line off. Or at least loose. Um, across to the reserve tank. Clamps is loose. It's kind of been leaking too. I'll probably change that clamp. Okay, I'll let that lay there. Let's see what holds that evap line down in there. Steering brackets, it's gonna come off. I went ahead and took the three bolts out of the power steering reservoir bracket and unclipped the mass airflow sensor holder out of it, lift it out of the way. Um, looks like that air bleed line going through the supply lines. Just slide, push that plastic piece over and lift that line off of that nipple. Like that. I'll probably end up uh, bungee cording that to a wiper arm or something. The reservoir tank up there. My antifreeze should be about drained out of it. I'm gonna take an air hose and just kinda blow the blow the dust all off of this thing. It's got a lot of dust on it. Sand. Spinning to the beach or something. I uh, probably started in clipping uh, these wire ties out of the intake. Uh, the vaps up out of there. Um, yeah, I'll probably unplug the throttle body. There's a perch valve back there somewhere. It's got a bolt holding it. Millimeter bolt, take it out. Let the purge valve loose. I don't know. Yeah. All the wire ties and plug ins and uh, evap solenoid and disconnected off the intake. I'm going to take the bolts loose in it and see if that's all I need. The intake bolts are 13 millimeter. The intake's dislodged and there's a brake booster hose here in the back. Needs taken off and the intake should be uh, appear to come out of there. So I was stuffing paper towels down into the intake ports to keep particles out of there. The next step that I'm going to do is disconnect all these coil plug-ins front and back. 
unplug these wires and the uh, these cam phasers and uh, solenoids and uh, cam position sensors. And get all the stuff that's on the valve covers off of there. Pull the coils out of it. So the coils are removed and I just took an impact and took out took loose all the valve cover bolts. I took uh, all of these 10 millimeters holding the sensors and the cam actuators loose on the right bank and it looks like the left bank and the water outlet I'll have to take the engine mount bracket off to get access to the left bank sensors and actuators and the water outlet it has two bolts hold it and one of the bolts is down behind the mount There's that uh, direct injection fuel pump and uh, line assembly. High, high pressure. Really high pressure. Power wash the car with it. Um, something that still needs to take place is to uh, take the generator loose after I get the... Uh, belt the serpentine belt off of it I set the engine on um, on a jack a piece of plywood separate the jack from that from the oil pan to cushion it now we're going to take his supper mount loose I had to raise the motor up a little bit to get it out from underneath that water outlet and hose, but uh, it seems to be uh, moving right along. Uh, it looks like some 18 millimeters in the front and back, and one in the middle. And the rest of the mount. There's a tensioner. That's got to come off. And the water outlet bolts. They got to come off. And move that hose and stuff out of the way. And the serpentine belt. And then get the other uh, cam actuators. Sensors. I've removed the tensioner arm and the idler pulley that was bolted to the alternator. The tensioner arm has three bolts through it. The center one even has to come out. And took the accessory drive belt off. I took the inside alternator bolt out and left the other one part way in there. I'm not sure why the generator should have to be removed at this time just to get a gap in this cover so it'll go back in there I took the two 10 millimeter bolts out of the water outlet there's an o-ring or a couple of them that need replaced now let's bend this hose over out of the way with any luck Any other plug-ins are off of the uh, head sensors and actuators. I'm going to go ahead and take all these bolts loose. Deal with the cover bolts on top. And uh, 
let the motor down and take the dampener bolt out, which is a torque yield bolt. I've ordered a new one. I want to remove all these sensors and I'm going to mark them. An actuator, cam, the cam actuator. Mark all their positions. Intake exhaust, right head. Intake exhaust, left head.